1963, James Baldwin wrote an essay entitled A Talk to Teachers, in which he addressed the challenges faced by teachers in the United States as they struggle to educate their students about the myths and realities of U.S. history. He writes, American history is longer, larger, more various, more beautiful, and more terrible than anything anyone has ever said about it. Here is a narrative from United States history that you may know. In 1943, Jewish American psychologist Abraham Maslow published his influential paper, A Theory of Human Motivation. In it, Maslow outlined the needs of humans and ranked them according to importance. Since then, in popular culture, the hierarchy of needs is often depicted as a pyramid. Although this shape did not appear in Maslow's original work. The first layer of needs is physiological. These are the biological needs that we need for survival, like food and shelter. Second on the hierarchy are safety needs, like job security and a safe neighborhood. The third layer includes our love and belonging needs, like friendship and community. Fourth is the esteem layer. Importance here is given to personal esteem for oneself, but also the respect one receives in the community. The fifth layer is self-actualization, which Maslow described in 1987 as, quote, a desire to become everything one is capable of becoming, end quote. Maslow's work has been used widely and quoted often. It was also expanded in the decades after the 1940s to include new categories of needs, like the spiritual and the aesthetic, like our need for beauty. Maslow quoted in 1987 that the order of human needs is not nearly as rigid as he implied. In his early work, Maslow placed more emphasis on the individual and less on the community. He believed that self-actualization is a goal that is attained after a long journey. Our individual needs are attained alone, and it is only after this point that a person reaches their highest level of capability. Now for a narrative that you may not know. Prior to the first publication of Maslow's work on human motivation theory, he spent six weeks at Sikaska, which is the name of the people, their language, and the Blackfoot Reservation in Alberta, Canada in 1938. The time Maslow spent at Siska would have a profound effect on his work. What he discovered was that self-actualization was at the bottom of the pyramid or first. Next came community actualization and finally cultural continuation. In the Sikso worldview, you arrived with an inherent spark of divinity. This can be made manifest in the world through education, rituals, ceremonies, and individual experiences. According to Blackfoot scholar Ryan Heavyhead, quote, the year the 30 year old Maslow encountered astounding levels of cooperation, minimal inequity, restorative justice, full bellies, and high levels of satisfaction. He estimated that. 80 to 90 percent of the Blackfoot tribe had a quality of self-esteem that was only found in five to five to ten percent of his own population. End quote. This inherent self-actualization or dignity that Maslow encountered is held by many traditions, such as the Buddhist notion of the Buddha nature. These interrelated concepts of self-actualization community actualization, and cultural perpetuity deserve our full attention as the current individualist and capitalist fabric of the United States has other colonial nations unravels before our eyes. So 
Why have we not heard this part of the narrative before? Friends of Maslow of like Harvard professor, Dr. Richard Katz, postulate that perhaps Maslow may have been concerned with elevating Sitzka teachings, which could diminish his later works. Indigenous worldviews offer an alternative, which is a direct threat to our current violent narrative. And these prejudices continue in academia today. The James Baldwin quote I began with starts a chapter of a book I highly recommend entitled Lies My Teacher Told Me by James Lowen, which I cannot help but reference. The late writer, history teacher, and educator peels back the mythology of United States history, leaving us with a far richer, horrifying, and fascinating narrative. For example, if history students were taught the full story of Potawatomi woman Pocahontas, real name Amanut, they would see a larger picture of a woman who spoke at least two languages. They could learn that she began interacting with the English colonists who were ultimately responsible for the destruction of the indigenous America at the tender age of 11. If it were consciously discussed, through her story, students could learn something about consent, white supremacy, the patriarchy, and the long history of lost and stolen indigenous women. I was done a disservice. I could have learned about the rich community found in many indigenous nations, their resilience and beauty. We do our community a disservice. And to be honest, community actualization sounds really great right about now. The Unitarian Universalist seventh principle and the second source, the direct experience of that transcending mystery and wonder affirmed in all cultures, speaks to this. As we spend time in community, I want the members of that community to know the full story. People like nurses, real estate agents, a childcare provider, a credit card company associate, that person driving next to me on the road. I need my therapist to understand microaggressions and white supremacy. I need these people in my community to be armed with a counter narrative, a new story against the lies they've been told about me and my people such as I feel less pain than white Americans because my life depends on it. If self-actualization or inherent di divinity is the starting point many traditions suggest, it requires that we wipe the sleep from our eyes. We can begin to engage with ourselves and our community as our not Instagram ready selves. For me, it means providing a resounding yes to the question, can you be a black Buddhist? What does your personal counter narrative look like right now in this moment? May it be so, blessed be, Ashe.